feet and we've come to worship the Almighty God. We've come to bless His name. We've come to lift Him up while we stand to our feet and honor Him today.
sometimes our hands and voice don't want to do it. But we have to command our hands and voice and feet to just praise the Lord. Amen.
love you. We honor you and we praise you. And for that reason alone, we bless your name. God, we magnify you for you are good. You are God. You are merciful God. You are a principle keeping God. You are a soul winning God. We glorify you God. Now Lord we ask you to forgive us for our sins. We repent. We're sorry. We change our minds. Lord, we were wrong. And you were right. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us with your presence this morning. We know that you're here. We know that you're everywhere. We ask you to manifest yourself. That we will see you. That we will feel you. That we will make you known and blow you up and make you big before this world. Lord, we thank you for forgiving us for our sins. We thank you, Father God, for keeping us even though we keep right on messing up. Now, Lord, we know you to be the sovereign God. You do what you want to do. When you want to do it. To whom you choose to do it. Now, Lord, we ask you to grant us mercy. Grant us favor. Grant us your grace. Bless us, Father God, that my words will be your word. My thoughts will be your thoughts. That the people will hear from you today. That lives will continue to roll on. And that we will continue to glorify you in all that we do. Now, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We lift you. We magnify you. We honor you, Father God, for you are God. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your healing power. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Yes, we serve the awesome and the amazing God. He has blessed us one more again. He has given us favor. If you don't mind standing to your feet, let me call your attention to the book of Jonah, chapter 4. In the Old Testament, the book is Jonah. The chapter is 4. The verses are 9, 10, and 11. Jonah, chapter 4. Verses 9, 10, and 11. In the Old Testament, the book is Jonah. The chapter is 4. Verses 9, 10, and 11. When you found it, you will discover these words. Then God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And he said, it is right for me to be angry, even to death. But the Lord said, you had pity on the plant for which you have not labored, nor made to grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city, in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern between their right hand and their left, and also much livestock. I want to talk about the merciful, sovereign God. The merciful, sovereign God. You may be seated. 
the merciful, sovereign God. We find ourselves in the need of mercy. I told you last week we ought to praise the Lord in times of trouble. Because sure enough, we are in trouble. We have trouble on every side, trouble on every end. We are in the process of finding ourselves in the midst of trouble. You see, the fact of the matter is, you're either in trouble now, mm -hmm. headed for trouble, yes, yes. or coming out of trouble. Mm -hmm. Trouble knows your address. Yeah. Trouble knows your Twitter account. Mm -hmm. Trouble knows your email. Mm -hmm. Trouble even knows your P.O. box. Mm -hmm. Trouble is all about us. Mm -hmm. If it's not trouble at the house, it's trouble on the job. If it's not trouble on the job, it's trouble in the community. If it's not trouble in the community, it's trouble within ourselves. The literary writer says there are three phases of conflict. Number one, there's man against nature. It is when the elements of nature does not line up with the preference of man, so man finds himself fighting against the elements of nature. Number two, there's man against man. There's always somebody trying to hold you down, trying to keep you down, regardless of, of how hard you work or how educated you get. There is a conflict that is known as man against man. And finally, the literary writer says that not only is there man against nature, not only is there man against man, but there is man against himself. Many times we are our biggest fault. Many times we are our biggest challenge. Many times we are our biggest struggles. Many times we bring things on ourselves because the way we act, the way we think, the way we do things, we find ourselves struggling against ourselves. In the text, we find all of the above. When we look at the book of Jonah, if you don't mind, I just want to preach the whole book today, the whole book. I read three scriptures, but you don't mind if I just preach the whole book. If you've been a part of our daily reading in Sunday school, you know that the book of Jonah has some answers to your problems. First of all, I want to talk about, number one, God's call. Secondly, I want to talk about, number two, God's confirmation. And thirdly, I want to talk about, number three, God's concern. Yes, God has a call. God has a call on all of our lives. If we're saved, if we're born again, God has called you to do something. That's why, that's why we have no pew members that sit on the pew, do, do nothing during the week for the Lord, and do nothing on Sunday for the Lord. We have no pew members because God has called all of us for some reason. He may have called you to the medical field. You ought to share his word. He may have called, called you to dig ditches. You ought to share his word. He may have called you to Congress. You need to share his word. God has called all of us to something to do something. So it is in the text. God calls Jonah to go down to what God calls that great city of Nineveh. God calls it a great city. But Jonah calls it a wicked city. I want to tell you, I want to tell you, even when man sees things as wicked, God sees it as good. Even when men see you as corrupt, men see you as messed up, God sees you as good. Hezekiah Walker says this, God saw the best of me. When everybody else saw the worst of me, God saw the best of me. He says, he says, when people were talking behind my back, God saw the best of me. God does not see us the way we see ourselves. God sees us as great people of God. If you're born again, if you're saved, there is something about you that God has blessed you with. It doesn't matter if you can say it like anybody else says it. Doesn't matter if you can play like anybody else plays it. Doesn't matter if you can sing like everybody else can sing. God has called you to do something. So 
But I want to talk about God's call. God calls Jonah. And he says to Jonah, go down and cry out to that city, the great city called Nineveh. Jonah didn't want to go, go there because that city was the enemy to Jonah. Theologians believe it was this city that, that caused turmoil in Jonah's spirit. It was this city that killed Jonah's foreparents. It was this city that was always enemies to Jonah. And because they were enemies to Jonah, he didn't want to tell them the word of God. Right. Now, why would the preacher, why would a Christian, why would somebody who loved the Lord not want somebody else to hear the word? Well, because we exist in these fleshly bodies. We, we walk in flesh. We exist in flesh. And our flesh gets in the way a lot of time of our spiritual walk. God says, he calls Jonah. Come Jonah, he says, go down and, and share the word of God with those in Nineveh. My first point under God's call is that God calls us to share his word even to the wicked. God has called us to share his word. God has called us. Somebody in this room has been called to share his word. You don't have to be a preacher to share the word. You don't have to be a deacon to share the word. You don't have to sing in the choir to share the word. You don't have to be a part of first impression to share the word. God has called all of us to share his word. Secondly, secondly, under God's call, when we are disobedient to God, we find ourselves on a downward spiral. Yeah, yeah. The text declares that God calls Jonah to go to Nineveh, and he goes the opposite direction. He goes to Tasha. Nineveh is, is just west. He chooses to go northeast. It's just like us. <laughs> it's just like us. When God tells us to go right, we go left. It's just like us. When parents tell children to go right, they go left. When parents said, don't touch, we have to touch it anyway. Let me just share with you. Whenever God calls you to do something, do just that. Do just that. Because when God, when we disobey God, and God has called us, when we disobey God, we find ourselves on a slippery slope. A downward spot. It's right here in the text. The Bible says in chapter 1 that he went to Tasha. He fled to Tasha. He fled from the presence of God. It's always dangerous <laughs> to flee from God's presence. It's, it's always dangerous. To, it's a dangerous thing for you to run from the presence of God. The Bible says he, he went down to Tasha and he went, he, he, he fled to Tasha and he went away from Joshua, Joppa and found himself in Tasha and he paid the fare. Sin will call you and sin will cost you. Sin will call you and sin will cost you. Look at it. When he's trying to get away from God, he got to pay the fare. But let me tell you, when God calls you, if it's God's call, God will pay the bill. If it's God's bill, God will pay the bill. Whenever God's call you, God can pay it, and God can make it right for you. Let me tell you, whenever you find yourselves headed into sin, away from the presence of God, it's going to be a call from sin, and it's going to cost you for sin. The Bible says, the Bible says that, that he had to pay the fast. And he continued on this downward spiral. He went down to Tasha. He went down to Joppa. He went down into the ship. What I'm trying to tell you, sin will always call you and cause you to go down. It will pull you down. It will pull you down, young people. A uh, peer pressure, when peer pressure pulls upon you, it will cause you to sin, and that peer pressure will cause you to go down a slippery slope. It will cause you trouble. It will cause you problems. It, it will cause you, it doesn't matter what he looks like. It doesn't matter what she walks like. It doesn't matter how she's built. Let me tell you, sin has a way of pulling you down. In the gutter. Right. Whenever you leave the presence of God. So he boarded the ship. When he got on the ship, God sent a great storm. 
And when God sent a great storm, he went to sleep. <laughs> Let me tell you, some people will cause you problems, then they go home and go to sleep. Some people will cause you agony, and while you're wrestling with the storm, they're down in the bottom of the ship in sleep. They're not just sleep, they're slobbing sleep. They are snowing sleep. They are drooling sleep. They are dead asleep while you're wrestling in a storm. That's why you can't be unequally yoked. Because when you're unequally yoked, those who cause you problems will be asleep because they have no conscience for godliness. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, uh, Sister Darrington, the Bible says that after Joshua, after Jonah caused problems, he went to sleep. I mean, he went to sleep. I mean, they're asleep. They up there wrestling with the boat. They up there wrestling with the wind. They up there wrestling in the storm. And he's down there sleeping like a baby. You know, all hell can be breaking loose in the baby is dead asleep. Jonah is sleeping like a baby because he's the problem on board. The Bible says that, that it was such a, a fierce storm until the boat was threatening to fall apart. The storm was threatening to tap the boat. Let me just share with you, whenever sin is on your agenda, then destruction is on its way. Whenever sin is present, whenever sin is on the agenda, your itinerary shows you destruction is on the way. We fall into danger when we leave the presence of God. Our disobedience, our disobedience have a negative impact on everybody in which we are associated. Our disobedience, you can be stubborn, you can, you can be rebellious, you can be sinful, but your sin doesn't just impact you. Everybody that's associated with you have a great impact, a negative impact because of your sin. Everybody on the boat had problems. For a while, Jonah didn't have any problems. For a while, Jonah was sleeping like a baby. But everybody associated with Jonah, everybody on the ship had issues. I mean, they were wrestling with the oar. They were, they were wrestling with the anchor. The anchor wouldn't hold. They were wrestling to keep the boat afloat. And they were wrestling to keep the boat from tearing apart. Yeah, yeah. It is all because of our sin. Jonah went away from the presence of God. And when he went away from the presence of God, he was disobeyed, obedient to God. And whenever we're disobedient to God, we need to understand, even though we are asleep, other folk is suffering. That's right, that's right. Even though it's cool with us, other people are suffering based on the commitment that you made with the devil. Yeah, yeah. So they were suffering, they were struggling, they were, they were in, bombarded by this trouble on board. Yeah, yeah. We need to call on our God. And he and he alone to the, can deliver us. Yeah. In the text, it declares that the captain of the boat, he knew that sin was on the boat. When you're the captain of the boat, you need to know that sin is on the boat. And if you're the captain of the boat, you need to make sure you, you address the sin. Some pastors never say anything. People just do what they want to do. Some pastors just let you handle it your way. And some pastors say, it's your thing. Do what you want to do. But if you're the captain of the boat, yeah. you're going to have to say something about sin. Yeah. So the captain of the boat goes down and he begins to ask Jonah questions. Who are you? What's your occupation? What country are you coming to us from? Uh, what people do you live among? In other words, wake up from that. Let me tell you, sometimes you just got to wake them up. <laughs> you just got to wake them up. You have to wake them up because they start trouble and they go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever had somebody that will cuss you out and they go to sleep? Okay. Have you ever had somebody that, that will misuse you and they go to sleep? Yeah. Have you ever had somebody that tells you off and then, Sister Wood, they just go to sleep? 
You up all night long trying to figure out what you did. You up all night long trying to figure out how you can fix it. And they fast asleep. Just like Jonah, snowing sleep, drooling sleep, slobbering sleep, uh, dead asleep. And you are wrestling with this thing that they have started. So the captain went down, began to ask questions, what is really going on with you? Jonah said, yeah, I'm the problem. They cast lots, and the lots fell on Jonah. And when the lots fell on Jonah, Jonah agreed, I'm the issue. I'm the problem. He said, well, what must we do? He said, throw me over the, over the boat. Throw me over the side. Let me just share with you. Sometimes our sin will get us thrown off the boat. Sometimes our sin will get us thrown off the boat. Sometimes our sin will get us in a messed up situation. We think we have the conscience to go through it. We think we can handle it regardless of what people say about us. We think that we don't care about what folks say, but at the end of the day, what people say to us and about us make an impact on our lives. If you don't believe me, let me encourage you today. If I speak good things to you, you light up like a Christmas tree. If I say something good to you and encourage you and say, man, you sure did do that thing today, it's all you need to make it further through the day. The reverse is as true. If somebody down talk you, it's going to negatively impact you. As long as you are human, you walk around here talking about only two or three people can negatively impact my life. Let you be up for a job promotion and they tell you no. Let me tell you, it negatively impacts your life. Let somebody discriminate against you. It negatively impacts your life. We must pray. To the great and the awesome God in order for our blessings to be turned over to us. While they were on the boat, they prayed to their gods. And so they woke Jonah up and said, Jonah, now you pray to your God. Who are you? Jonah had the decency to say that I'm the one that served the living and the true God. And in the meantime, I'm running from him. In the meantime, I'm disobeying him. Let me tell you, if you are a Christian, you cannot afford to send missed messages. People ought to know who you are, and they ought to stand for what you stand, because whenever they get on a boat that's reeling and rocking, they want to know where you stand. Sister so Richard, they want to know where you stand. They want to know where you stand. On your good days, they want to know where you stand. On your bad days, they want to know where you stand. Let me just share with you, folk are watching you. They are watching your every move. They are calculating your move. And not only are they calculating, they're saying what they ought to be seeing from you. So they called on their gods. Their gods didn't answer. So they asked Jonah, now Jonah, you get up. You say you serve this true and the living God. You say you serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You say you serve this, this extremely great God, the self existing God. Why don't you get up and call on your God? Then I fall into God's confirmation. Jonah gets up, calls on his God, and the wind and the waves lay down and went to sleep like Jonah. The wind and the wave went to sleep just like Jonah. The wind and the wave began to settle down. And I want to let you know, God's confirmation is the fact that regardless of how hard they steered, regardless of how they tried to keep Jonah on board and on track, let me just share with you, it wasn't until Jonah got off the board. It got off board. It wasn't until Jonah got off the ship. I want to say to you young people today, some people got to get off your ship. Some people you got to float without. Some people you got to float on. Some people you got to leave behind. Everybody can't hang with you. If you're going somewhere, if you're doing something, you're going to have to leave somebody behind. Here you are rapping with purpose. Those who, 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 who take their time to do stuff. God has called us to do ministry. And you want to hang out with those people who, who take their time. They got to pray about everything. Some things you don't have to pray about because God has already called you to do. 
It's an excuse. It, 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 it's a chance for you to, to hesitate. It's a chance for you to be stagnated. If you got to pray about it, you should have prayed about it this morning. Don't wait to pray about it today. In other words, early in the morning, you ought to thank the Lord before your feet hit the floor. Early in the morning, you ought to say, Lord, I thank you for another day. When your eyes fly wide open, you ought to say, Lord, I thank you. I, I praise you. I magnify you. And after you thank him, and after you ask him to forgive you for your sin, then you ask the Lord, Lord, I know you can do it. Lord, I'm asking you to do it on my behalf. This is the prayer you ought to have in the morning. And you ought to tell the Lord, Lord, whatever comes my way today, give me wisdom, give me knowledge, give me understanding on how to handle it. Because if you pray it in the morning, you don't have to stop in the middle of your work in the pray during the day. Yeah, we ought to pray during the day. Yes, we ought to pray without ceasing. Yes, we ought to do our thing as we pray. But you ought not be stalemated. You ought not procrastinate. A lot of folk going to pray about it, but they just procrastinated. A lot of folk going to... See, the reason why I know people are procrastinating is because they have a procrastinating spirit. They have a hesitating spirit. They don't want to try anything. See, a lot of friends, including preachers and pastors, are not my friends because I'm a risk taker for the Lord. I, I, I walk in faith for the Lord. And when somebody say that the Lord won't do it, I say, watch what God does. And if you're going to walk in faith, you ought not always talk about, God, I know you can't do it. And let me tell you, when you say, when you say, maybe they won't, maybe I won't have, or I can't, you're telling God, God, you can't do it. You're telling God to his faith, God, you can't do it. If you want to go to school, don't use money for an excuse. Go find you some money. All right, all right. If you want a job, don't talk about how they discriminated on, on your last job. Go get your number. Right. You see, we have to put faith into action. If, if things ain't running right around the house, get it running right. You got to tune up sometimes. I just want to tell you, you, know, you can't have a procrastinating spirit. They procrastinated with throwing Jonah overboard. And when they, they procrastinated, the winds were still beating. The storm was still raging. But when Jonah said, I'm the one, they should have picked him up right there, hands and feet, and, and chucked him overboard. But what we do, we have the Pharaoh mentality. Uh, Moses want to get rid of the frogs on Pharaoh and Pharaoh said no I want one more night with the frogs I have come to a conclusion that some people love misery and in the midst of them loving misery they like going through the motion they've gotten used to it they've gotten, they've gotten excited about it they love and they look forward to trauma when I, when, I, when I came to the New Beginning Church they tried to play drama on me and I said to the brother when there were deacons during that time, I said, now brothers, y'all have gotten used to this. I am not getting ready to get used to this. I said, matter of fact, y'all acting like women. And you're acting like 13-year-old girl women, as a matter of fact. And I'm not getting ready to be victory over one thing or the other. We're going to get up and do it, and we're going to trust God to bless it. If you're going to walk with God, this is God's confirmation. If you're going to walk with God, you're going to have to walk with God because God gives more when you're on your way before you get, before you get started. Yes, yes, yes. As you move, as you walk, as you step with God, as you trust God, God can bless you as you walk with him. God's confirmation, God's confirmation. So when, when they threw him overboard, then God confirmed that he was the one in sin. And when God confirmed that he was the one in sin, then, then they started worshiping Jonah's God. I stopped by to tell you that. If you trust God, and when God blesses you, others will see the blessings of God. I, I said if you trust him, if, if you trust God, God will bless you, and others will see God's blessing through you. And as they see God's blessing through you, 
they will turn away from their God and turn to the holy God that we serve. Jonah says, throw me over. They threw him over. <laughs> and then they saw how God handled things. And they said, oh, wait, his God can speak to the winds and the waves. His God. Are your enemies saying? Are your friends saying? Are your neighbors saying your God can do it? If your neighbors are not saying that your God can do it, then you need to check yourself because you're about to wreck yourself. God's confirmation, God's confirmation. A God will confirm that sin is running rapid and sin will have to be thrown overboard. What is it? What is it in your life? What is it? Not the big sin, but the little sin in your life. What is it in your life that, that you love so much that you won't give up for God? I always was told, I always told, and this is not biblical, but, but it's, it's good country talk. If you love something, set it free. If it comes back, it's yours. If it doesn't, it never was. Now, I ain't tell you to kick your husband out of the house. I didn't tell you to dismiss your wife. But the, the, I told you it wasn't my own. But if you love something, give it some space. I didn't tell you to go separate. If you love something, give it some space. And if it comes back, it's yours. If it doesn't, it never was. Right. God confirms that we are walking with him based on how we handle his situations. When God calls you and you walk away from him in sin, and God will call sin to be thrown overboard. My next point to you, under God's confirmation, God will come to see as we repent. God will calm the sea as we repent. Let me tell you, you can't get out of sea. It doesn't matter how long you try, doesn't matter which way you try, you can't get out of sin. You've already tried to get out of sin. You can't walk away from sin. You need God to get you out of sin. You need to call on God. Jonah called on God. We can talk about Jonah all we want to, but the fact of the matter is, Jonah is just like you. I, I want to tell you, Jonah's sitting in this room right now. Matter of fact, Jonah is in front of you. Jonah is behind you. Jonah is beside you. Jonah showed up this morning at New Beginning Missionary Baptist Church. Jonah showed up this morning at the New Beginning Church. Jonah showed up this morning at 4251 Sure My Road, Houston, Texas, 77048 USA this morning. Jonah is here, but Jonah, let me talk to you before you leave. Before you get mad at the preacher, Jonah, let me just tell you, there's still hope. Jonah, there's still hope because others will bow down before your God if you stand in faith for your God. You don't have to deny God. You, you don't have to move around and say that he's not your God. But when you stand for the almighty God, the almighty God will stand for you. Jonah prays. Jonah prays, Lord, I messed up. But you know when Jonah prayed? After he was thrown over. After great fish sucks him up. The Bible says that Jesus compares Jonah's period in the belly of the whale, or some say well, in the belly of the great fish, to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah, yeah, he, he compares it. He compares Jonah being in the belly of the fish for three days. And Jesus was in the belly of the ground for three days. And as the fish puked, Jonah up the ground had to give Jesus up. It's confirmation. When we get to verse number nine, Jonah has gotten out of the fish. Jonah has, has gone to Nineveh and preached. Jonah has shared the word of God. And Jonah knew that if he shared God's word uncompromisingly, the Ninevites would stop sinning. They would turn over their way. It reminds me of the 21st century. If the man of God will stand flat-footed and share the word of God, don't make it cute, but share the word of God. Don't make it flattery, but share the word of God. Men, women, boys, and girls will come running to Jesus Christ. Too often times, preachers don't say,
doing what God says because they were about tithes and offering. Yeah. I'm convinced that the God we serve, yeah. if it's God's will, it is God's bill. Yeah. We need to stand flat-footed and tell people yeah. what the word of God says. And if you're one of those who get upset with the man of God and get upset with God, you in good company with Jonah. That's right. The Bible declares that after he spit him out, after the great fish spit Jonah out, God, God designed a tree. You know, God is the architect. God designed a bush. God designed a tree. In Jonah chapter 4, now Jonah mad with God. Jonah has gone and got him a seat. He's sitting and watching the city of Nineveh to see what God will do. But see, what the point is, the king of the city, the one who sat in office, took off his royal apparel. He began to sit in sackcloth and ashes. He called for a fast. Yeah. What would it have been like years ago? Yeah. Just five years ago. What would it have been like? Yeah. If our brand new king, Brother Miles, did a good job in Sunday school, identifying our brand new king, yeah. identifying our first king, what would it have been like five years ago? Yeah. If our king would have came into his reign yeah. and called for a fast and, and a prayer throughout the great United States of America, I guarantee you, it wouldn't be close to 600,000 deaths in America because of one disease. Yeah, that's right. What would it be like if our first king, and they're trying to make him our second king, would just a bow down and say, I don't know. You see, when you're in leadership, it's not a problem with saying, I don't know. When you're in leadership, God looking to see if you would call on him. When you're in leadership, God is trying to look and see if you can do this without him. Right. Uh -huh. I, know you, I know you're educated. I know you, I know you put your, your, your nouns and subject in agreement every time you speak. I, I, I know you, you matriculated through many degrees and many schools. And I, I know that your community uh, liaisons look up to you. But you need God, baby. Yeah. You need God, dude. You need God on your side. The confirmation today is, if you don't have God, you don't have anything. Doesn't matter what you drive. Doesn't matter the neighborhood you live in. I've driven in neighborhoods with, with, with fences around them, and you can get five cars in before it closes. And then when it begins to close on the sixth car, it, it, it doesn't want you to sue the, the, the apartment complex. So when it gets close to you, to try to scare you, and it'll bounce right back off. That's instrumentation. When it says somebody is in the path and they don't want children to get killed, they don't want cars to be scratched up, so that, that, that security, that fake security fence backs up. Let me tell you, whenever God's on the scene, the fake mighty one, the fake devil himself, he has to bag off of you. He has to give you room because God is in control. And God is in charge. So, so Jonah sits and he waits for the destruction. And he tells God, I knew you would do it. That's why I didn't want to come preach to these wicked folk. I knew you would spare them. Because after the king submitted himself, the Ninevites submitted themselves. After they prayed and fast, the Bible says that God repented. The Bible says that God changed his mind. Brother Miles said, and he did it very well this morning, when he said to us that, that God's repentance is not like man's repentance. God changed his mind. God was about to wipe them out in 40 days, but God changed his mind. Will God change your mind? Will God change his mind concerning you? That's my final point, and I'll leave you alone. God's concern. Not only does God have a call, not only does God have confirmation, God has concern. And his concern is that every man would be born again. His concern is that every person would walk like they're saved. We got a lot of saved folk, but what do they do when they get angry? Do they walk like they're saved? 
Do they talk like they're saved? Do they act like they're saved? Or they say to God, God, you sit over here. That's what Jonah did. He said, God, not only am I going to watch this city, I'm going to watch you and see what you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we have a merciful God. Yeah. And we have a sovereign God. God's concern is that we are just like him because God was patient with you. God put up with you. And some of the junk that you have done, God just sit and watched over you. He kept you in danger seeing and unseen. God is watching over you. And then we have the nerve, we have the audacity, we have the gall to tell God to wipe them out. I hope that God wipe them out. No, Jonah is sitting there watching the city. Yeah. The people are spared. Yeah. Yeah. God brings up a tree. The tree was pleasant to Jonah. Jonah sits under the tree. It provides shade. But in the midst of its providing shade, not only did God raise up a tree, he raised up a worm. Yeah. <laughs> God is the one who can command the tree to grow overnight. And God is the one who can take the tree down overnight. Yeah. Let me tell you, God can bless you in the morning, and by noonday, God can strike you down. God can bless you in the morning, but by noonday, you'll be out of here. Somebody went to sleep last night, and they didn't get up in the morning. It's because God is able to keep us. Yeah. And if God doesn't keep us, yeah. we can't be kept. So he sends a, a worm, and the worm eats into the tree. The tree dries up and dies. Now Jonah really mad. Now you done took me and made me preach. Now you've taken me and the folk that I didn't want to get saved gotten saved. And now you put me in the belly of a big fish. And then you did give me the mercy to get out of the fish. Now you've given me mercy to sit under the tree. Now you, God, has caused the tree to die. Jonah's upset with God, just like you get upset with God. God has to speak to him like he spoke to Job. He said, Job, where were you? Job, when I hung the stars in the sky, Job, where were you? When I rolled back the clouds and made it look like pillars, Job, where were you? Now here it is, and he says to Jonah, you getting upset over a tree. You getting upset over a plant. You're getting upset over a tree. And what, what reason do you have to be upset? Matter of fact, you're getting upset over a tree that you didn't plant. You're getting upset over a tree that you couldn't grow. You're getting upset over a tree that, that you didn't even nourish. And now why did you get upset? Jonah says to God, like some people have said, I'm so upset, I wish I was dead. He said, God, I just want to let you know. You can take me in my life right now. Matter of fact, I ain't putting up with this no more. Let me tell you, what you need to understand is God gives life. And God takes life. God gives it. And God takes it away. And many folk have tried to take their lives. And God wouldn't even let them die. And now they got to deal with the wounds the rest of their days. But God wants you to come into life with him. God says to him, John. I just want to let you know, you mad about a tree. Should I not be concerned? Yeah, yeah. Talking about God's concern, Peter and Alfred. Should I not be concerned about over 120,000 souls and livestock that I want to get to know Jesus? I want to get to, he says, these folk cannot even concern their right hand from their left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This phrase, this sentence in the Greek means they cannot even get out of this spiritual darkness they're in. And because they can't get out of this spiritual darkness, in the Hebrew, what that says is, they need God to pull them out. I stopped by here on my way to the rapture to let you know you can't get out of your spiritual darkness. You need God to bring you out. You need him to watch over you. You can't get out. You tried to get out. You tried to let him get you out. You go to one coliseum after the other to try to get out. But God is the one who gets us out. God is concerned about every soul that is born. Every soul. And this text declares not only is he concerned about every living soul, he is concerned about your possessions also. 
God is concerned. You need to take your possessions before the Lord. You need to go before, before you buy something. Before you purchase something. You need to ask yourself the question, how does this glorify God? Not that it makes you feel good, not that, that you like it, not that it's cute, not that it's going to give you a certain status. Your question ought to be, how does it glorify God? God's concern is that every living person is poured out spiritual darkness. There may be somebody with us today that haven't thought about God's call. And God is calling us. Haven't even given a thought to God's confirmation. God confirms his word. And certainly we haven't given a thought to God's concern. God is concerned that every man, every woman, every boy and girl gets to know him. And over 2,000 years ago, the same picture that is painted in the book of Jonah, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale, for three days, Jesus Christ was in the belly of the earth, of the world, for three days. He died a voluntary death. He is the sovereign God. He is the merciful God. And if you never tried him, this is your moment. You ought to try Jesus. Try it for yourself. What mama has is good. What daddy has is good. But God blesses the child with his own. When it comes to salvation, every child must sit on his own bottom. When it comes to salvation, it doesn't matter if your father, grandfather was the chairman of the You need to trust Jesus for yourself. Jesus that we're talking about took a tree. He marched up Calvary's hill. He died on that tree. They took him off the tree and laid him in a borrowed tomb. Early that 30-day morning, he rose from the dead. You ought to try him. He can give you life. And he can give you a spiritual living. And he can rescue you from this cold and dark world. Will you try today? Because the church is open. Why don't you try Jesus? Why don't you try God? And all you have to do is repeat after me and invite him into your life. Repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe that if you honestly pray this prayer, trusting Jesus as your personal Savior, you believe, we believe that you're born again. And we believe that when you die, you're going to heaven. There may be others of you who are already saved and know that you are, but for some reason or the other, you struggle with sin like I do. I want to pray with you and pray for you that repentance will be on your heart and your mind. You may have been out of church. You may have gotten mad at somebody. You, you may have, have turned your back on God. I want to say to you, just as God would say to Jonah, God is concerned about you. God wants you back in church. God wants you back in his fold. God wants you back with him. Lord Jesus, we ask you to bless those who have consented to prayer. Bless those who need repentance. Bless those who who fallen short. Those who slipped up. Those who are in between churches and in between and right fellowship with you. Bless us and deliver us. This is our plan, Jesus' name. 
Amen and thank God. There may be others of you who, who don't have a church home or in between church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the captain of the church. Where Jesus is the, the one that we focus on. Where Jesus is the main attraction. Where Jesus is the center of attention. I recommend the New Beginning Church. If you're here today and you've not received Jesus, this is your moment. If you're here today and you need prayer, this is your moment. If you're here today and you need a church home, this is your moment. The door is open. Come to Jesus. Just as you are. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just as you try him. Try Jesus. Try Jesus. Try him. If you're mad with God, trust God. Somebody died in a way that you didn't think they should have died. You blame God for it. Trust Him. If you got a separation from somebody, whether through divorce, death, or destitute, trust God. This is your moment. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for those who have come, those who have heard. We ask you to bless them and fulfill them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church. Thank you for being a part. And if you're ever in the Houston area, come by and visit with us. We're at 4251 Shiremai Road. Shiremai is spelled S-C-H-U-R-M-I-E-R, Shiremai Road, uh, Houston, Texas, 77048, USA. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord. It is offering time. We rejoice. When it's time to give to the Lord, it is time to give to the Lord. It is often time. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. There are two. There's a white and blue envelope for your tithes, offering, and sacrificial giving. And there's a white and red envelope for pastor's love offering. If you need an envelope, raise your hand up high. Those young ladies back there are over 18 years old. They raise your hand up high they, so they can see you. They're a little over 18, so they need to, need to be able to see you. See your hand. Hold your hand up high so you can you can be certain. Yes, Lord. by way of our Zelle account. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. I will bless the Lord. We're going to ask those on this side to stand and follow the young lady from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's child's offering and sacrificial gift. Bless him, bless him. Bless him, bless him. Bless him. Bless him, Holy. Bless, bless him. His holy name. for these gifts. We thank you for the gifts that will be mailed. We thank you for the gifts that's been given in this room. 
We thank you for the gifts that will come by way of Zell. We thank you, Father God, for the gifts that will come by way of Cash Out. We ask you to bless us, Father God, that we will continue to give unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Bless him. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Amen. Every Monday I, I try to send out our daily reading on Mondays. We want you to make sure that you maintain that daily reading uh, throughout the week, the daily reading on Monday mornings. And then we have an annual schedule. We are in the second quarter of that annual schedule for daily Bible listening. So we want to saturate ourselves with the Word of God. Yes. If you're behind on your daily reading or behind on your daily listening, please, ma'am, please, sir, please, ma'am, please, sir, catch up, catch up, get back on and get to writing again. The daily listening and the daily reading, amen. We want to saturate ourselves with the Word of God because as you can see, it's the Word of God that changes hearts. We serve the merciful, the sovereign, the anointed God. And it's the word of God that will make us, make us whole. Amen. We want to keep in mind those on our prayer list. Keep praying for them and keep praying with them. We want God to continue to bless those who are in bereavement, those who are sick. And we want to pray that God continue to bless our great United States of America. We thank God for those who have given the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice for this country that has made a difference in our lives. We live free now because of the sacrifices that have been made. So during this Memorial Day weekend, please remember and please thank God for the sacrifices that have been made through the military, men and women of this nation. Thank you so much. And for those who are yet fighting, those who are yet a part of this fighting battle, let's lift them in prayer that God will continue to bless them. Young people, I'm waiting on your report cards. I'm waiting on your report cards. I'm waiting on your progress reports. I'm waiting on your degrees. I'm waiting to celebrate with you. I, I don't know anybody graduating, whether it's from middle school, head start, or kindergarten or high school in our congregation. If you are, I'm waiting to get, get your uh, invitation and I'm waiting to get your report card or progress reports. Amen? Let us stand to be this message. We bless your name, we praise you, we honor you. We thank you for your mercy. Lord, thank you for not taking us out when we deserve to be taken out. Thank you, Lord, when we were in our sins, you didn't let us die in it. Thank you, Lord, that you are able to keep us even as we're thrown over the boat. Thank you that you can keep us even in the belly of the great fish. Thank you that you can keep us even when we pout. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we ask you to grow us up. Bless us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Bless us, Father God, to obey the word of God. That the word of God will change our hearts and change our minds. Lord, we ask you to give us conviction that we won't have to go through what Jonah has gone through. And we ask you to continue to give us faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We are, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. You are dismissed. God bless you. And God keep you is our prayer. Let the church say amen. Yeah. Let the church.